Hi, I'm Michael Feldstein. Welcome back to eLiterate TV's series on personalized learning. In the last two episodes, we've been learning about Middlebury College and their increasing comfort levels with the role of technology in personalizing learning. But Middlebury has always placed a high emphasis on the value of interpersonal learning, on the interaction between students and faculty. And I can think of no better example of the value of that kind of learning than what you're about to see. What you're about to see actually took place after our formal interview. The students and faculty were so engaged with the questions about personalizing education that we simply kept talking. At some point, the camera operators realized what was going on and switched the cameras back on. The magic that you're about to see in this conversation, the relationships between the students and the teachers and how they learn from each other, is exactly what personalized learning skeptics are afraid that technology will cause us to lose. But pay attention to what personalized actually means in this conversation. It's not as simple as small face-to-face -face seminars. This is interesting. Um, you talk about how it's difficult to get students to look at 18th and 19th century prose, but that was the age of letter writing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right? And um, there's something about blogging, even though it's immediate, that to me bears a relationship to letter writing because I, I like you, I blog and I put a lot of thought into the way I, into what I'm writing in a way that I often don't with email, for example. Mm -hmm. It's not just a letter, it's actually an epistle. It's a, it's a public declaration of what I think, and you know, maybe I spend hours instead of days, but I still spend some time thinking about it. And I, I wonder if, uh, if there's something, that maybe the pendulum hasn't swung as far as we think it has. It's just that the minute I hit send, you get my letter and can reply. And what, what, do you, what do you think? Do you blog, Teddy? Um, once in a while. Yeah. I think I'm going to pick it up a lot more once I graduate and have more time to do it. But um, I definitely think of it as sort of a, a cross between like a reflective journal and a public declaration of what I think, like you said. Um, and, um, you know, I probably would have had a, some really concrete thoughts to say here um, if I had, you know, sat down and blogged about it beforehand. So I see that as oh. a modern way of. Um, of, of really crystallizing what you actually think. Um, now, do you comment on other people's blogs, or um, do you have people comment on your blogs? I so when I when I did blog, it was more creative based. So what mm. I would blog, what I would post about, would be um, creative short stories that I had written, oh. and I'd connect it to an art piece that I had drawn that week, and oh. find some correlation between the two and post it online. But um, unfortunately, that didn't turn out the best because of some complications with the website. Uh, but I do currently, like, I, I read fashion blogs. Mm. Um, I look at, I read, there, um, I also read, like, reviews on books. Mm. Um, not only that, but they are, there are also lots of bloggers who are bloggers, and mm -hmm. they put videos out there. So I also watch their videos, and all of that interconnects. And I tend, I'm, I'm a person who likes to stay behind the scenes sometimes, so I don't really comment on what I do like. I, I share sometimes. I send mm. links to my friends, like, hey, this is really cool. Check it out. Um, and I feel like... That just, it's like a, a networking process and it just continues to grow and more people might take it upon themselves to start blogging. And then there's like a whole, like a, a whole community of bloggers that's built, which is already out there, but you can join that really easily and just put your thoughts out there and have to have someone that's read it and appreciate it is really like just aspiring to a person. And how does that experience compare to your experience of the academic community here at Middlebury? I see it as an extension. Um, I'm never going to sit down and write an essay about, you know, a book I just read. But I might write a blog post, and that'll make me feel a lot better about where I stand having read it. Um, this summer I was living, um, you know, in a sublet, getting used to the, the idea of living in the real world. And um, one of the things I found was that you sort of have to start assigning, you know, your own meaning to all this, this media you're consuming, the events that are happening around you. Um, and you know, I'm sure letter writing was one of the ways people people used to do that. And I think writing as a as a 
activity and art form will continue to, to serve that purpose for a long time. Mm. Your description yes. of um, putting together a blog post or comparing it to a letter writing um, reminds me of what I do when I write a lecture. Even at this ah. small liberal arts college, we have a lot of times where there is no better vehicle for delivering information than here's 50 minutes where I've thoughtfully constructed an argument or put together some evidence, and I have to be very conscious of who my audience is and what we've done together before and what we'll be doing together the next time that we meet. Mm. Um, and we could do a better job of helping our students develop those skills themselves, right? Mm. To say you have a limited amount of time to convey some key information that will lay the groundwork for discussions for weeks to come. So what will you do? How will you make those choices? What evidence will you draw upon? Um, you know, what debates will you present? And um, yeah, it's, it is, there are many people who are who are excellent at this mm. um, form, right? Yeah. Of, of giving a really, really wonderful lecture. Um, hopefully, you all have seen some of those here during your time. Um, but it's a it's a skill to practice, and it's one that I would think would be more relevant if you know that that speech is then going to be recorded and shared with others, right? Um, or communicated to a larger audience than the dozen people in the room. Yeah. So, so this is interesting. So. Um, the popular narrative is that blogging is cool and lecturing is not, right? So, and Teddy, you had said something about wanting to flip the classroom and, and, and see some of that, maybe I'm putting words into your mouth, but see some of that didactic content in a form that you can consume on your own so you can have conversation. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it that simple? Is it just a matter of being able to play it back in your own time? Is, is do you buy the argument about the lecture being um, in the same family as the blog in terms of its its role and its uh, the thought you put into it and the value it, it delivers? Well, I mean, another thought I've just had is that you know you've always had a textbook, and the textbook in some ways is is a form of lecture that you can consume on your own time and then mm -hmm. go through. Um, and um, discuss in the classroom, but you know I'm still sitting on the lectures that um, that go over similar material to what's assigned in the reading, um, hopefully to to reinforce that. Um, so you know maybe there is a little bit of hype around the whole idea of, of flipping this model on its head. Um, but I'll, I'll say, I have never read a great textbook, but I've seen <laughs> many great lectures. Okay. I don't know, maybe, maybe you feel I've differently. I've read a few good textbooks. Okay, very good. Um, I'm glad to hear that. I, I know, I mean, the, part of, the, um, part of the, the whole idea around personalized learning is that people learn differently. And so, I mean, maybe I'm one of the people who can sit down and read through um, some really, I guess, concentrated um, knowledge, I guess, yeah. and, and absorb it. Uh, but, you know, other people might not be able to do that. Um, but. I, I definitely think it brings up the question of, you know, are we are we doing something really new here, yeah. or are we just um, pointing towards technology as you know some way to you know solve all of our scaling problems in education? Yeah. So John, you teach writing, and you are a writer yourself, mm -hmm. and you've recently, with Denise's help, been experimenting with bringing other media into that writing. What do you think about this idea of the the lecture, the recorded lecture, the blog? and the essay. How are those forms related yeah. to each other? Oh, I've got a lot of thoughts about it. I'm loving this part of our conversation, <laughs> too, because we're, we're getting a little lift off here, too. Uh, f for me, again, they all come back to the notion of intellectual community. Mm. Uh, a lecture, um, th there are places for a largely expository lecture. But I would agree that a textbook could probably do that. Mm. For me, the role of a lecture at a, at a place like this is modeling how one might work with certain material. Mm. As, a, as, a, as a teacher, one who's lived with that material for a long time, and, and modeling uh, as an act of discovery, a lecture where you have some things you want to say and you have a, a structure, but where you're responding to the students, perhaps you're breaking down a discussion, small groups, impromptu writings at, at a certain point, and you, are, and you are falling into new territory where you're not quite in control of it, which mm. is one of the main intellectual activities, showing how that might work. I think of Robert Frost in one of his lectures, said, one of his letters said, 
No surprise in the writer, no surprise in the reader, no tears in the writer, no tears in the reader. Mm. I think in, in a lecture or in, dis, in discussion, uh, the, the teacher's uh, role in part is to show what it might be like to enter into material you don't control as a whole person mm. and then to move toward some kind of shapely response that can be shared. And I, I really like what you said about blogs before too because a blog is that kind of experience. You're putting stuff out that you, you've given thought to, but you're not fully in control of it. It's in process. You'll write some more about it tomorrow. Yeah. Somebody will give you feedback. That's like a discussion section. Yeah. So I would, I love the idea of blogs, and I think it's, it's happening more and more in Middlebury classes as part of the circle through which intellectual community arises. You've got discussion face-to-face. -face, you've got your blogs. You've got a kind of dynamic approach to lecture. What does not appeal to me mm. It's when people talk about the MOOC model where they say, at our megaversity, we have a professor who can give you an absolutely uh, authoritative set of lectures on the following technical subject. And mm. then in your colleges, your professors can lead the discussions on them. That's mm. it. And I want to say, you haven't seen our lectures. Uh, that's one thing I want to say as a devotee of small colleges. But also, it's sort of like, here's a piece, that lecture becomes like a textbook purely yeah. a textbook. There's no, there's no reciprocity in it. It's all worked up. Yeah. And so that's not appealing to me at all. And in a way, thinking about how, uh, how Middlebury might, might uh, work more in a more sophisticated way with this technology and also offer it at other sites is more interesting, given yeah. what we do here. John and Sarah's definition of a good education which is certainly personal, if not personalized, requires that the students have a sense of agency, that the answers aren't all worked out in advance, and that the students have some say in the direction of the educational conversation. As Teddy and Denise talked about their experiences with blogging, that kind of approach seemed to resonate with their sense of a personal education as well. The key to personalized learning, at least in the sense that Middlebury means it, is that students need to feel like actors in their own education, not just receptacles passively receiving information. As we look at other schools and what they're doing with personalized learning elsewhere in this series, it will be interesting to see how well their notion of personalization matches up with this one.